to go. In terms of foods, now you've mentioned all, all kinds of foods out there, and uh, I, but our culture now, I don't think they've centered themselves on a preparation for a direction. Now, uh, you got these chefs out there and they're engaging different food reviews. Uh, what do you what do you see what do you see unique culture going with food? What's your what's your take on that? Well, um, I forget who it was earlier mentioned about the how cosmopolitan British cuisine is now, uh -huh. uh, because people have been traveling and because of the cultures that came in. Uh -huh. uh, Liverpool, my home city, had one of the oldest Chinatowns in Europe. Really? So we ate Chinese food even when I was a, a kid and. Which comes to another point about it is most of us at this particular generation were brought up in the tail end of rationing. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's probably but, true. For, right. for, for 20 years after World War II, to save foreign currency, uh -huh. meat in particular was rationed and so, uh, so was sugar and confectionery. So, um, you know, you didn't waste anything. Uh -huh. No, not at all. So, uh, whereas an American might have said, well, throw the kidney away. They didn't, as a matter of fact. But, uh, but we don't get those kind of foods. We don't, I mean, you go into the marketplace in America, they won't serve, you can't get liver. You can't get... Uh, I know. I mean, that's because it, it's all processed. Uh -huh. The stuff is industrially processed in massive abattoirs uh -huh. where they take these things out and they send them off for processing into, you know, anonymous pink slurries. That's now, right. When I was, uh, just before I left uh, England, my mm -hmm. local butcher was, he got his he got his sheep from North Wales. Oh, really? Liverpool being close to North Wales. And you'd go in and you'd have to push past the carcasses hanging from hooks oh. around the store, you know, oh. just out in the open. And that was part of the success as well. It's almost certainly illegal here. Mm -hmm. But over there, it was considered that uh, meat like... Um, lamb was not edible unless it was well hung uh, oh really kept it hanging there it was part of the process is that i mean how what, that created a rarer flavor taste more healthier i don't know well, i don't know about healthier but it meant it look frankly it rotted a bit so yeah, it was okay. softer you know the protein was um, the protein became softer so i would i would go and you, you you could go and pick a half a sheep on the spot they went they went and bought them off the farms there yeah. I think they still do that in North Carolina too. We've heard about people buying a whole cow and things like that. But um, anyway, we want to just thank you, Ian, yeah, and I no, want to no. bring you back. Stay as long as you can, and if you have to go and come, that is all right uh, as well. Uh, well, um, hold on, I got a couple of things. But I, Elton, we can have an Ian Elton show. No, no, that's not an Ian Elton <laughs> show. But I mean, I think when you talk about liver and uh, as you put them comfort I, foods, I and I think that. You know what that means for the American uh, future diet. I, I I was doing a segment recently with a uh, nutritionist, and uh, he was sharing with us, you know, the migration of foods and how the migration of foods have led to uh, in interesting health components. Now, because I mean, if you go back, ooh, what hundred a hundred years, one hundred and fifteen years, some of the health conditions that we face. Today, we didn't face. Yeah. We didn't face. They weren't existent. Diabetes didn't exist. I mean, you know, I mean, high blood pressure might have been there, but people ate closer to the earth, or maybe they ate foods that were, you know, as you put it, the, the unique foods or comfort foods. You know, so I, I don't know. I'm just analyzing, you know, foods should be healthy, or should, foods should add value. And uh, they should contribute, I think. Industrial foods add salt and sugar because yeah. it's well known through thousands of years that humans will eat more foods with sugar and salt in. So it doesn't matter whether it's good for you or not, but the food manufacturers will cram it in. They'll take those awful, the, the organ meats, and they'll grind them up and they'll produce artificial meat with uh, laden with sugar. If you, you'd be amazed... One of the key issues that came in here was corn and high fructose corn syrup. First of all, they feed the corn to the animals, the chickens. That's one of the reasons why chicken is now so prevalent, because mm -hmm. in the past you have to feed it food grain. 
Now they can feed it corn. Mm -hmm. And that's why chicken is so cheap in the supermarkets in Britain and in there. Mm -hmm. And the corn, you know, the corn, what's left is also tended to high fructose corn syrup, which is put in everything, wow. everything. Mm -hmm. You go to the supermarket and look at the labels and try to find something that hasn't got high fructose corn syrup in. Yeah, yeah. Good luck to you. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of nutritionists tell you this stuff is toxic. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it makes a profit for the corn manufacturers mm -hmm. who all make it and the, and the sucrose manufact fructose manufacturers who make a lot of money out of it. And so there's a lot of lobbying going on to make sure. No, I they, mean, also, they also, also, even. They also well, dried foods. Meats were dried. They were hung and let dry the season with salt, and then they were cut and used. I don't know what impact that had or has, but you know, it, it's interesting. It would be interesting. And seafoods. We've always had seafoods in our culture diet, you know. And so, what does that mean for the future? But we have to, we have to find a unique and dynamic way to get healthy foods on the market, foods that have a long-term benefit for overall health, and so. And it's just something that I'm thinking. And they're about. often very tasty as well. Yeah, exactly. Bacalao, exactly. salt cod, kippers. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. one, one of the things that people comment on at the store, particularly Americans and those who have lived in England and, and then come back, is they like the fact that a lot of the British sweets and products don't have all the colorings in and many of the artificial ingredients. I mean, I remember back when you know, I was younger in England, I can't remember the year, but tartrazine, which is the yellow coloring or what it's referred to, was over there years ago was actually... Um, eliminated from foods that were specifically for children uh, like our orange squash and things like that because mm -hmm. they realized uh, some of the effects of it especially on children so when I came here and you know macaroni and cheese in the boxes which is a staple of craft product um, f5 I think it's f5 and 6 is is the equivalent I was really surprised so um, and to go back to the meat, I think a lot of it is, as Ian said, after the war, things were much more um, difficult to acquire. Right. Um, so you didn't. I mean, my parents grew up in the war. You did not waste anything. And even growing up, if we if we were fortunate, there were five of us in my family. If we had roast lamb on Sunday for a roast, on Monday, we had sliced lamb. On right. Tuesday, we had shepherd's pie with the, with the, my mum had one of those grinders. Right. And then the next day, mum would put the, the bone into the pressure cooker and we would, <laughs> you know, and put lots of vegetables in there because there usually wasn't much meat left on the bone. Mm -hmm. But we, we fed off of that roast probably a good four to five days. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't wasted. Um, and that was and you've forgotten as well in those days when I was growing up in Scotland in particular, people mm -hmm. boiled joints of meat. Oh, yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. they, they did that in America too. Yeah, yeah, they did that in America. They had they neck bone, T bone, they boiled pieces of meat to get soup and stew, and they make a great, incredible stew with it. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, my dad after christmas he would take which sounds when people hear this they're like ooh. but what he would do is when the turkey carcass had been well picked and we'd had turkey for many days uh -huh. he would take the carcass put it in the pressure cooker and then i they don't do it so much here but christmas boxing day we have piccalilli red cabbage pickles we have all kinds of pickles traditionally with the cold meat um, and there was always some left in the jars, uh, like the Branston pickle and that. And then there was there was always leftovers. Dad just put everything in that pressure cooker. <laughs> and it was never twice the same. Obviously, every year was different. But we fed off that for a long time because 
you know, I grew up in the era of take it or leave it. There weren't a lot of alternatives. <laughs> so we ate whatever was put in front of us. But um, yeah, it's it's just different. It's um, incredibly different. And I, I, mean, I think also in today's generation, we're in the instant world. Everyone wants instant food, things that they can just put. Nobody wants this long drawn process. Uh, that took so long for everything. But on that lovely note, yeah. Ian, would you like to give us a few food fun facts? And I, I need to right, move, uh, move forward, forward on the program. Right. Yes. Well, uh, eat s smoked, smoked and preserved. I love bacalao. It's one of the cheapest meals you can get. The uh, salt cod, it's uh, a few dollars a packet. And, uh, I make my own recipe for bacala, which involves uh, Yukon gold boiled with the salt cod and with lots of butter, onions and garlic added. Mm. And it lasts for several days. It's incredibly tasty. It's full of protein, full of vitamins um, and, you know, flavorsome because it, it, it's a traditional dish, remember? It was the only way to preserve a lot of the things that we think of as giving flavor were there to preserve the meat in the days before fridges. Yeah. You hung stockfish, yeah, uh -huh. which was dry and salted. You hung hams because they were salted and dried. Bacon was pre preserved. Yes. So, you know, the, the, this is not, um, the, 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 this, this, this was about preservation. Yeah. That's an interesting uh, analysis. I mean, dried, uh, hung, and you know, uh, uh, those kind of foods. I mean, I think pickles, they're all ways of preserving food. Yes. Yes, yes, and they're yes, all yes. traditional. Long cold winter. Of cooking as uh, well. so that, and they have a health component for us today. So we'll have to discover that. <laughs> we'll have to come back and do a yes. review uh, uh, of that. And uh, thank you so much, Ian, for being a part of our community and our growth and our review. And we look forward to future, you know, discussions yes. with you. And uh, we'll harness out. As a matter of fact, we'd love to understand and come to review your FBI. Uh, this, we discussion. will. We have an and, FBI uh, agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We will I'll do bring it that him, way. I'll bring him on, and we'll do a whole segment on uh, that. But um, man, and uh, man, you, you, you are on point, man. Keep doing what you're doing. You'll be okay. Everything's gonna be fine. You know. I, okay. You look great, uh -huh, by the way. Uh -huh, mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's what the di di dying revives you. <laughs> well, the, well, we're glad you're revived and uh, back. So you're not dying. You're not. You're, it's only it keeps on processing. Everybody's dying. Yes. But, you know you can do that. It's a retake. Yes. You just go back on stage and do it again. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. All right. We'll See you, everybody. If we find ourselves in New York, we're looking forward to talking with you. Yeah. Okay. Up. All right. Hi. All right. Be well. Bye. 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 Bye.